two college football is here. We already have a head-to-head top 10 matchup, Texas-Michigan. The defending national champs, Michigan Wolverines, are a seven-point home underdog, a full touchdown home underdog. Is it an overreaction, or had they really fallen that much this season? I'll let you know along with the top 25 matchup, Tennessee-NC State. And we're going to go deep, a little deeper for you. Bonus, two bonus games for you. Top 30 matchups, Iowa State-Iowa, Boise State-Oregon. I'm going to break down all four of those games, the four biggest college football games this Saturday, September 7th, with my projection, my 10,000 game simulation projection for every game, my power ratings, analysis, and free picks coming up in this video in just a moment. Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV, and this is your weekly college football top 25 preview video breakdown. And as I said, we're going to go just a bit outside with two bonus games because there's only two true head to head top 25 matchups, but there's a couple other teams that are on the outside looking in, and if they win, will be ranked next week. So I'm going to give you those bonus games at the end as well. But as I do every week, I run 10,000 simulations for every game on the board, different matchups, situational analysis, and we come with an average margin of victory for each game. And it's pretty much a power ready. It's really a true point spread. My projection on how the games will play out. Now we do factor in other metrics, of course, such as mat- you know some subjective matchups, injuries, coach information, but all that is factored into the simulation as well. So it's a pretty accurate number. And as you know, we crushed it last year in college football. Shoot, we've crushed it every year. I've been at wagertalk.com for the past four seasons. In fact, as we enter this football season, I'm number one ranked combined in college and pro football sides the last two years combined on all ATS selections. And we're looking to have a fantastic 2024 as well. If you'd like to get my best bets this week for college and pro football, check them out at wagertalk.com. Hey, some of these games here on the video might make my client best bets as well. Let's start with the biggest game of the week. It goes at 12 noon Eastern on Fox National TV. Number three, Texas at number 10, Michigan. Uh, The early look ahead line on this game, the opening line was three and a half. And now it's seven, seven and a half. Now it did drop back down on Thursday afternoon from seven and a half down to seven, which is obviously a very key number. Let's start with my simulation. My projection has Texas winning by three and a half points. Wow, that's exactly where the opening number was. And that's where my projection is. So I do think the original number three and a half was very accurate. I do think Texas will win this game, but it's seven or more. There's value with Michigan. The problem is it's hard to estimate how much Michigan really has fallen off this year. Coming into this season, perhaps the least experienced returning team in all of college football in Division I, especially on the offensive side of the ball, and it showed last week. Uh, Michigan was not impressive against Fresno State. They were a three-touchdown favorite, a 21-point favorite. They won by 20, 30-10. Now, the defense played well again, and I do think the D could be pretty good this season. They're just loaded, even with all the players they lost to the NFL. But the offense is a concern. They only threw for 121 yards last week against Fresno, They only outgained them 4.4 to 4.2 yards per play. Uh, They were equal in first downs. They were only 4 for 11, third down efficiency. Now, Fresno could be a decent team this year, um, and they are a good passing team. And as I mentioned in my solo video last week, I thought Michigan would completely shut down the run game. They did so, held Fresno to just nine rushing yards. Uh, But Fresno threw for 235 yards, but it is a good passing offense which could be one of the better in uh, mid-major football this season. Uh, But still, Michigan does look down a notch. I think it's an overreaction from week one, though. The line was 3.5, now it's 7, 7.5. Once again, I think it should be 3.5. So as long as it stays 7 or more, I would lean Michigan with the value, although I'm hesitant because, once again, I do think this Wolverines team is going to lose multiple games. In fact, their season win total projects three to four losses this year, and this probably will be the first of a few losses for the defending national champs. Um, as far as the total in this game, you know, I do think that Michigan offense is down a knot. Texas, by the way, looked lights out last week, 52 nothing against Colorado State. Um, I gave you a free play on Texas right here in the solo videos last week on Wager Talk TV. And be sure to check out those standalone videos. I've got one for the late night Saturday game, Utah State, USC. Free play in that uh, game as well. So I do this top 25 video. These are the high profile games, but I also do some of the additional games for standalone free play videos. So yet another reason to click subscribe and hit the bell as well for instant alerts when those free play videos go up throughout the week in football and also baseball as I record this video on a mere 21 and 6 baseball run the last few weeks. Wow. Don't sleep on baseball, even though football is here. As far as the total here, it opened 45 and a half down to 42 and a half. So once again, I think that's a reaction to how weak the Michigan offense looked last week. So if you think they turn things around, you're getting some line value. Um, but I would still lean under it. I would lean Michigan 
Um, but once again, not sure it's going to make the best bet card because uh, the Wolverines do look a lot weaker offensively right now compared to last year. All right, that game's at 12 noon Eastern. Your other top 25 matchup goes at 7.30 Eastern Saturday night. This one is on ABC National TV in Charlotte, North Carolina. Number 14, Tennessee at number 24, NC State. Well, versus number 24, NC State. In fact, if you're trying to find this on the Wager Talk live odds screen, you'll have to go down to the write-in games because it got bumped from the regular rotation because they reversed NC State and Tennessee. They flip-flopped it. Even though it's not a true home game for NC State, they flipped and put them on the bottom. It's now on the added board being played in Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte. Uh, so once again, if you're looking for this game, you got to go all the way down below the extra games to find the odds on the live odds screen. Just a little tip in case you're wondering why it says canceled on the main board. It wasn't. It's just uh, they switched the uh, home road um, rating, I guess you could say, for the two teams the way they listed it in the rotation order. First, let's start with our simulation. 10,000 games simulated through the database. And on average, I've got Tennessee winning by just 6.5 points. And I say just 6.5 points because as you check this on the Wager Talk Live odds screen, you'll see once again the line open 6.5, exactly where my ratings were. And it's now currently 10 across the board. So money's coming on Tennessee. It's fully understandable why they blew out. Um, they blew out their, uh, their opponent in their first game, Chattanooga, 69-3. to 3. 38-point favorite. They won 69-3. They were up 45-0 at the half. My friend uh, Tom Alexander from ESPN Radio in Alabama pointed this out to me a few weeks ago, that the best first half point spread record in college football the past few years has been Tennessee, over 65% against the number, and they were up 45-0. They covered the first half again. So if you do like Tennessee, don't be afraid to play them early. They do jump on especially bad teams early, but teams often make an adjustment at halftime, and I do think this point spread is inflated. So based on line value at 10 or more, I would be leaning towards NC State, but definitely full game because Tennessee, once again, has been a monster in the first half here in recent years. So they could get off to a fast start. Might present a good in-game betting opportunity. You know, if you can get plus 14 or plus 17 with NC State in-game, if Tennessee gets off to another fast start, that's when you maybe want to pull the trigger because, once again, I project just a 6.5, but basically a touchdown win. The line has gone from 6.5 now up to 10, so I think it's getting a little frothy, especially if it hits 10.5 or more. Over-under hasn't moved much. Open 59.5. It's up to 60.5. Uh, the real question in this game isn't if Tennessee is good. They looked really good last week. It's what we're getting from NC State. Um, kind of a lackluster 38-21 win against Western Carolina as a 32-point favorite. Um, NC State actually was tied at the half in that game. They trailed entering the fourth quarter as a 32-point favorite. So that's yet another reason this line has moved um, three and a half points higher. Uh, NC State did have a solid 28-16 to first down edge, and they had over 500 yards of total offense. Outgained them almost 200 yards, uh, but they did have some interceptions. I believe they had three interceptions in that game, and that was the difference. Um, so we got to see better quarterback play from NC State. But I do think maybe a bit of an overreaction based on last week's results. At 10 or more, there is some line value with NC State at 7.30 Eastern Saturday night. Now, those are your two true top 25 matchups for Week 2 this Saturday, September the 7th. But I always go deeper for you. I always try to give you as much info as possible in these videos. And by the way, if you're liking it, if you're appreciating it, quick thumbs up, like, click it, boom, thank you, right there. That keeps this content free. Hey, also comment below. I read all the comments. I reply back. What are your thoughts on these top 25 games? What other games are you looking at in college football? Do you think Michigan is really down so much this year where they might lose three or four games like the season over under wins project? Let me know your thoughts on Texas, Michigan, also that NC State, Tennessee game and other games you're looking at. Comment below. I read the comments and I reply back right here on Wager Talk TV here on YouTube. Let's look at two bonus games for you. Before we do so, quick reminder, the three days for $49 special is still available on my page right now, wagertalk.com. That's not just college. That's not just NFL. It's not just baseball. It's all sports, all inclusive. And I bring that up because, yes, I'm number one ranked the past two years combined in college and pro football ATS profit. And we're going to keep it going with a huge weekend here, not only week two college, but week one NFL. But don't forget about baseball. As I record this video, I'm on a current 21-6 and six baseball winning run the past few weeks and it continues with daily baseball best bets even now that football is here we've got september and october baseball so the one year special is available on my page right now 800 dollars discount gets out gets it down to three dollars a day about a dollar per play for all sports all access promo code sm365 by the way that's on my page go check it out sm365 gets you a full year 365 days and nights for less than three dollars a day less than a dollar and a half a play 
baseball, basketball, and football. Now, if you want to try the smaller package, we do have a three-day sampler this week discounted down to 49. Normally, it's 69, but if you go to my page, stevemerrillwagertalk.com, you'll see the three-day package available for just 49. That gets you baseball, college football, and pro football. So no matter which option you choose, don't miss out on some great all-sports client best bets as baseball is just smoking them, and I've been consistently strong in football for decades. Great time to be an all-sports client, whether it's the three-day sampler or the one-year big boy. Don't miss out. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. Oh, by the way, I post free plays every day in either football or baseball as well. Bonus free plays on my page each and every day with analysis. All right, let's look at two games just a bit outside for making the cut. Top 30 games, if you will. And these games really did just miss the cut for top 25 action. And if the underdogs, the road teams, pull an upset in either game, they will most surely be ranked next week. We'll start off with the one game at 3.30 Eastern on CBS. Number 21, 29, Iowa State at number 21, Iowa. Obviously an in-state rivalry they play every year. And let's talk about the Iowa Hawkeyes. Just a fascinating team. You all that watched my solo videos last year know that I was fascinated by Iowa how low the totals became and how bad their def- offense was, but how great their defense was. I'd never seen such a dichotomy between offense and defense. And they were just an under machine last year, just repeatedly going under. They were setting the totals in the 20s at the end of the season. They were still going under. In fact, to put this in perspective, they did not score in their final two games of the season last year. They lost 26 nothing to their uh, f- playoff game against Michigan in the Big Ten Championship. And then they lost 35 nothing to Tennessee in the bowl game. But then they came out and scored 40 points last week in their opener with a new offensive coordinator and shut out their opponent 40 to nothing, Illinois State. Now, they were a 21-point favor, but still an impressive showing for a few reasons. First of all, the defense is loaded again. This defense was as good as any in the nation last year. And according to my metrics, they're the second most experienced unit returning this year. So they really are going to be the best defense in the country. They showed it last week, shutting out Illinois State, holding them to 12 first downs, just 56 rushing yards. But what was more impressive is the 40 points. Let's put this in perspective. This is, once again, an Iowa Hawkeye team that was shut out in their final two games last year and did not come anywhere close to scoring 40 points except for one game last year. I believe Western Michigan, they put up 41. But that was the abnormality because they had 20 or less in most games. In fact, overall in the season last year, they averaged 15 points a game. Let's put that in context. They played, uh, what was it, 14 games last year, and they averaged 15 points a game. They averaged only 18 the year before, but they gave up only 15 and 13 on defense the last two years. Also keep in mind, the 15 points averaged last year included some defensive scores. Their offense averaged even less than that. So the 40 points last week, very impressive, and that's a good sign that maybe they've turned things around. Friends is still there. It's 26th year or whatever it is, but his son is no longer the offensive coordinator. Could this be the buy sign for the Iowa Hawkeyes? Well, I think it might be, and uh, this is definitely a play-on team for me right now, and that would be my preferred side in this game. Um, the over-unders around 35. Um, Iowa unders are still worth a look, but if this offense has really improved, it might not be a sure thing anymore. But I do like Iowa minus three as a point spread. Um, that's the current line, by the way, three across the boards at the Wager Talk Live odd screen. And my database simulation projects Iowa to win by seven and a half points on average in this game. So we are getting some solid line value with the Iowa Hawkeyes at minus three or less on Saturday afternoon. And once again, comment below. Do you think this Iowa offense has turned things around? Um, they were very balanced, over 200 yards rushing, over 240 yards rushing and passing, 492 combined yards in that first game against Illinois State. Really nice showing. We'll see if they can step it up against a better team now. Um, But I think Iowa minus three does have some value here on Saturday afternoon. All right, let's look at the one other bonus game. And this is an interesting game late at 10 o'clock Eastern Saturday night. Number 28, Boise State against number seven, Oregon on the road. Number 28, Boise State going to Eugene, Oregon. Number seven ranked uh, Ducks. And the Ducks did not look good. By the way, it's 10 o'clock Eastern on Peacock. If you got your subscription still from the Olympics, you still get Peacock, and you can watch this game on Saturday night. All seriousness, though, uh, Oregon did not look all that great in their game against um, Idaho, on the scoreboard at least. 24-14, very lackluster win as a huge favorite. Um, So you dig a little bit deeper, though, you realize, eh, maybe a little bit misleading because Oregon did move the ball pretty well offensively. But keep in mind, they were a 49-point favorite against Idaho and they only won 21, 24 to 14. Also keep in mind, this is a team that put up over 80 points. Who was against Portland State? Was it last year or the year before in that season opener? 
So to only put up 24 points as a 49-point home favorite is definitely a notch down for the Oregon Ducks. We dig deeper in the box score. We see they did have 487 total yards, threw for 380, not much rushing, just 107. 5.7 5.7 yards per play to just 4.6 for Idaho. Elk gained them 487 to 217. But just one turnover, one fumble loss, and only 24 points is a concern because Boise could be a play on team this season. In fact, um, in the futures markets, there was a lot of sharp money this summer on Boise season win totals over. Boise to win the national championship. And I don't think they're going to win it, but they'll probably have a good chance of making the 12 team playoff as one of those um, you know, now non power conference schools. So there was some sharp money on Boise State futures for playoff action, season wins over. So could they? Could Oregon be on upset alert? Well, we'll see. I mean, this is a big number. Uh, currently, as we check the Wager Talk Live odd screen, uh, we see that the Ducks are about 21-point favorite across the board, a 21-point favorite in Oregon for this late-night game. My power ratings, my database simulation, rather, makes a projected power rating of 19.5. So at 21 or more, I do think there's a little bit of line value with Boise State, especially if Oregon is down more than maybe we realize this year. And that first showing last week, not very impressive. Maybe they went vanilla. Maybe they're keeping some things in check here for this uh, big game against Boise State. But we'll have to see. But once again, at 21 points or more, which is the current line, I would rather be on Boise. And my database simulation projects just a 19.5 point win. As far as Boise, the concern is the defense. They gave up 45 points last week against Georgia Southern. But it was an impressive showing offensively, to say the least. 56-45 to 45, um, at Boise Southern, at Georgia Boise Southern, Georgia Southern as a 13-point road favorite. That was a difficult situation for him to go play in an unusual, uh, unusual stadium, unusual travel to the East Coast. And now going all the way back to Boise and then Oregon. I am a little concerned with the travel situation, but still three touchdowns. Gives us a lot of wiggle room, and obviously we have backdoor cover potential with an offense that can put up 56 points like they did last week. Uh, This Boise offense looks pretty potent this season, and uh, they had almost 600 yards. Actually, they did. They had over 650 total yards of offense. So Boise State, a play on team, and they have some good backdoor cover potential. Just a little concerned with that defense because they did allow Georgia Southern to move the ball for over 500 yards last week. Um, So maybe the over is worth a look. You know, Oregon, yes, only they had 24 points, but they moved the ball pretty well offensively with over 480 yards. Uh, So the over 60 may be worth a look. This line's actually dropped a little from 61.5 down to 60.5. And And, um, once again, I do think uh, at 21 or more, Boise definitely has some backdoor cover potential to keep the game close. All right, those are the four biggest gains, at least the four top 30 head-to-head matchups this week, week two, Saturday, September the 7th. Comment below. Let me know your thoughts. What else are you looking at on this football card? Where do you agree or disagree with my game simulation? If there's any other games you want to ask about, let me know. I read all the comments. I reply back. Once again, I try to send these simulations when you guys ask. I know many of you did last week. I love the feedback. If there's a particular game you're looking at that you want some insight, hey, if I have some insight, I'll let you know. If it's a pass, I'll let you know as well. Let's learn and earn and win together. And once again, if you want my official best bets, the same best bets that are number one profit earned ATS the last two years combined, NFL and college football, the same best bets that are on a 21-6 and six run in baseball, check them out this week at wagertalk.com and check out that three-day sampler for just 49 It's a great way to try out my baseball and basketball. Well, no basketball yet. If you want basketball, <laughs> foreshadowing, get the, th- the one-year all-access. Use promo code SM365. That gets you all sports, college basketball, pro basketball, college football, pro football, major league baseball for the next 365 days and nights for just $3 a day. That's about a dollar and a half per play. I'm very selective. I average maybe one to three plays a day in all sports. Obviously more on Saturday in college football, more on Sunday in the NFL. But during the week, you know, maybe one baseball, one football in a weeknight. Um, so very selective, and it has paid off. Don't let you think less plays means less units won, because once again, I've won more units of profit the past two years with football ATS selections than anybody else at Wager Talk. And uh, baseball's just been fantastic as well. 21-6 and six run, averaging about one to two plays a day over the past few weeks. Check out all sports. If you want the basketball as well, if you want a full year, use promo code SM365. It gets it down to less than $3 a day. That it, Details are on my page, by the way. Or if you want to try something smaller, that three-day sampler for just $49. Normally, it's $69. It's just $49 this week. No promo code needed. That also is on my page right below the best bets. You'll see the three-day special. Check it out along with the daily free play. Bonus free plays, games that are just a bit outside for making the cut or posted as a free play each day on my page. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. 
Click subscribe, click the bell as well so you know when this video goes up each week. My NFL Fade the Public Week 1 video will be up this weekend. Don't miss it. And also those daily free play videos. Click the bell when you subscribe. Thumbs up, like, comment below. I read all the comments. I reply back. And don't forget to follow me on X, at Steve Merrill. Two R's, one L, at Steve Merrill on X and Instagram. And stay tuned right here to Wager Talk TV for some more great sports betting content for free coming up next.